soul. The Big Mac, the granddaddy of fast food. Love it or hate it, 2.4 million of these are sold every day. Cheap, basically devoid of nutrients and packed full of calories. But if you eat one, how long will it take to burn it off? I'm going to find out using some well-established science and a power meter to record my energy output, we can see just how long it takes. And not just for me, but for a pro cyclist, for an amateur and for a total beginner. But we'll also cover two really important things that you need to know about energy expenditure and exercise and one very big problem with calories. Let's start with the eating bit. A Big Mac itself contains apparently 493 kilocalories. That's 25% of your daily calorific intake. But who eats just a Big Mac? With fries, that's another 337. And a Coke, medium apparently, that's another 170. So in total, that's 1,000 kilocalories just there. Although intriguingly, McDonald's say it's 1,080 or 1,120, depending on which bit of the web page you're looking at. So that is half of your daily calorific intake and 60% of your salt and 120% of your sugar. Excuse me, better get riding. Right then, let's see how quickly we can do this. The added incentive of course, is the fact that it's raining and the weather is only going to get worse. So frankly, I wish I'd swapped out the fries for that little side salad thing that no one has ever ordered, ever. But anyway, 1,000 calories coming up. Now, the cool thing about this Wahoo hedging on here is I've got calorie counter that works off power and not off heart rate. It does go up slowly. 23, 24, 25. Literally the definition of calorie counting. Typically on a smart watch or something similar, your heart rate is used as a gauge of how hard you're trying. And then when it's combined with your age, your height, your weight and so forth, it can calculate an estimation of calories burned. However, it is pretty crap. Potentially over or under reading by as much as 40%. On a bike with a power meter, you can accurately measure exactly how much energy you are putting into the pedals. This measures power in watts. One watt of power is one joule of energy per second. A calorie is also a measurement of energy and is equivalent to 4.18 joules. So 1,080 kilocalories in your Big Mac meal means 4.514 million joules. However, there is one more thing that we need to factor in, and that is that we humans are pretty inefficient. So for every joule of energy that I'm putting through the pedals, I'm actually burning four times that amount, and most of it is just being given off as heat. Which, to be fair, I am quite glad about. That's 100 calories in four and a half minutes. At one watt then, it would take 830 hours of cycling to burn the energy contained within a Big Mac meal. The crux of this video then is how many watts of power you can sustain for as long as possible. An untrained person might be able to do 100 watts for an hour, a professional over four times that. Basically, I just need to try as hard as I can to get the best average power that I can. I'm quite hungry now. While I'm out on the bike, there are two really important points that we need to cover. 
Firstly, a lot of people think, and I certainly did, that a well-trained, really experienced cyclist is like a finely tuned machine with incredible efficiency, and that a beginner cyclist would be the opposite. But no, a lot of research has shown that the efficiency of the very best cyclists is basically the same as complete beginners, untrained people. Now this is really important because what it means is that a pro cyclist is not burning fewer calories than you because they're so good. No, broadly speaking, how fast you burn energy is entirely related to how hard you can press on the pedals. So the fitter you are, the easier and faster you can burn calories. It's quite addictive actually, looking at this calories per hour data. I've got to kind of temper it with the reality of what I can actually do for an hour. So I'm sat at about 1,300 at the minute, which might be a bit optimistic. I'll let you know. An untrained normal person who's asked to jump on a bike and ride might be able to produce up to 100 watts. At that power, it would take two hours and 24 minutes of continuous cycling to burn off a Big Mac. That is a big ask and way more than most people could do in a week. An average cyclist might be able to produce double that power. So at 200 watts, it would take one hour and 12 minutes to burn 1,080 kilocalories. It's easy to see why from this statistic, just how hard it is for unfit people to lose weight through exercise. And equally, just how hard it is for fit and active people to empathize with that situation. Now I, currently averaging about 340, so at this rate, it's gonna take me a little over 40 minutes to complete. If I was a pro cyclist, well, depends how good I am, and also depends how tall the pro cyclist is, because there's a big variety of sizes, all the featherweights, but some are bigger and more powerful than others. However, a rider like the Italian Filippo Ganna, who is notoriously powerful, having ridden further in one hour than any other human before, an astonishing 56.792 kilometers, if you were wondering, averaged 440 watts for that effort, which means that he actually burned off two Big Mac meals in that hour. 10 to go. Three, two, one, hey, there we go. Oh. Well, not gonna lie, that was bloody good fun. I can think of better ride fuel, but Ah, that was good fun. Now, before I give you my results, I did say at the beginning that there was one big problem with calories, a very important point to know. Whilst it might be a meaningful unit of energy, when it comes to nutrition, it's absolutely not. How many calories were there in this Big Mac meal? Well, no one actually knows. Calculating calories in food is an approximation at best. And secondly, research has shown time and again that what type of food you're eating and how that food is prepared dramatically alters how much energy you can absorb from that food. And in the case of an ultra-processed Big Mac, you can bet quite a lot. And then also, there's your own microbiome that dramatically alters how you absorb absorb and process food. So whilst you can technically see exactly how long it would take to burn a certain amount of energy through cycling, does it have anything to do with the Big Mac you've just eaten? No. The fact is that ultra-processed food is designed to taste good and not do you good. Furthermore, we're increasingly coming to realize that counting calories itself is not an effective way of helping you to lose weight or manage your diet. 
So what did I do? Well, it took me 51 minutes, 38 seconds to apparently burn 1,080 kilocalories, which is roughly approximate to a Big Mac meal. Um, as you, for regular viewers of GCN, you might be wondering how I ate a Big Mac meal, seeing as I'm A, a celiac and B, vegetarian. Uh, fortunately, we found a stunt person who was willing to have the Big Mac for me. This is GCN's stunt man for the day. Taking one for the team. How is it, John? Oh, it's a hardship, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we learned is that you can't buy a Big Mac meal before 11 o'clock. There's a Big Mac. Hi, what time are you starting serving lunch, please? Or like... Start I think we've just shown our McDonald's naivety. It's breakfast. <laughs> Right, so what is the take home message from this then? Well, after all of that, frankly, is to forget about calories. Counting calories does not work. And also those two really important points, which is that actually better cyclists do not burn fewer calories, but it's all about how much power you can put through those pedals. It might be less, it might be more than you thought. Now, I'd be super interested to know what you think about this video, so please get involved in the comment section down below. I look forward to reading all of those. And if you've enjoyed it, as always, please give it a big thumbs up.